Like, uh, th this story's blowing my mind. He's like giving them the half the halftime pep talk. Yeah, no, in most sports, it's Guys, like... Guys, you're playing too hard. They're going to realize... They're going to realize you're not mentally retarded. We're going to take it up a few notches right now. See if y'all can keep up. Uh. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 19 of the Scruff Cast. I'm John. And I'm Dan. Now, we've still got our same old familiar intro. But I have to remind the listeners that last week we put out the call for your suggestions. We're looking at spicing it up, Ch changing it up starting next week, episode 20. And we want your suggestions on what the change should be. That's right. So keep them coming, and we'll update you next week. We've already got some great ideas. <clears throat> we do. So get a few more, and we'll uh, we'll figure something out. Yeah, maybe one lucky listener, their idea will get picked. Hopefully, oh, it's a maybe that better. was an email coming in right now. It's an, not. I just it's a new again, I don't know how to mute my iPad. That's all. We're still figuring things out. You know, we have fun. We have fun on the Scruffcast. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, so we're we're gonna kick it off with a a, a topic that uh, I believe you wanted to go into, Dan. Something you yes. you read. I want to get my opinion? I have a question for you, John. Ask away. Do you believe, or I shouldn't say, do you believe? But um, do you think women should be allowed to play in men's professional sports like NHL, baseball, like MLB, NBA, or even like um, <clears throat> like amateur sports, like lower levels of professional leagues, you know, farm farm teams of like, you know, the AHL or the G League in basketball or like baseball, double A, triple A, single A? It's It's an interesting question because... For years and years, these leagues have been, like, men only. And then there are women-only leagues, but they're usually much smaller than these men-only leagues. And I'm going to have to say, in some cases, I think so. Maybe I'm thinking of sports like tennis and stuff like that, right? But it's it, it gets a little more difficult in these, like, contact sports, right? Yeah. And that's not to say that, like, you know, women can't play these sports as good as men can, right? But it's... It, br it brings us to interesting questions, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are, um, like, women's, like, hockey leagues, right? There's, like, I think an NWHL, right? But it's not very popular. So, I don't know. My, maybe it's just because it's, like, always been the status quo, but my gut kind of leans more towards, like, I don't know. It just seems like such a departure from what we're used to. I don't know. Yeah. No, I see what you mean. I think... Um... The reason I bring this up <clears throat> is because I read an article the other day. So I think it was a amateur uh, soccer league in Canada, and there was a woman who tried out. I think it was for like the Edmonton team or something like that. And they now her side is saying that she was good enough to make the team, but she didn't because she's a woman. Whether that is true or not is I, like I don't know because I, I don't think there's like a there's no set rules in place like in these professional leagues where it's like women can't play in these leagues, you know. There's no set, like, you know, rule in the CBAs or whatever, right? I don't think there is. The CBAs, so like, Collective Bargaining Agreement for our non-sports yes. listeners. I know they're out there. Um, so I think my stands on is I think if they're good enough to play in the league, they should. They, they should be allowed to play, right? But that's a problem. Are they good enough to play? And it's interesting you bring up tennis because there is a women's professional and a men's professional that are arguably... Um, pretty close in popularity the men's is maybe a little bit more popular you know what i mean but as far as prizes and stuff go i think i could be wrong but i think it's like the kind of the pots are the same for winning <clears throat> men's wimbledon or women's wimbledon you know what i mean yeah they're playing the same tournaments right on the same courts and everything but um that so that's like such a good sport for like um example because like the the top seed women could they go and play against the men like in terms yeah. of competition, I bet you they could. I bet you they could. But do you, but, do you think the number one seed woman, let's say like Serena Williams in her prime, yeah, could take out the number twentieth overall ranked man? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I I feel confident saying yeah. I don't know though Serena because Williams, like that, she, she cruises through the the competition in the women's league. Oh yeah, she destroys right? all so, the women. But like the thing is, like you you can just look at like the serve difference in speed alone. You know what I mean? Her serve's like 60 miles an hour slower than, than like, the top-rated man. 
Really? That yeah, big of a difference? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, there, there's a big difference, right? And that that's like a good I, indication right I there. I didn't know there was that big of a It's just kind of like, I don't know, it's it's biology at the end, right? Like, it's just, Well, <laughs> that raises the question, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's just a matter of fact. There are biological differences between men and women, right? When it comes to things like testosterone levels and, you know, muscular structure and stuff like that. Yeah. It doesn't mean that men are better than women or women are worse than men in any way at all, but... Though, it, you know, it's just biology. It can't really be ignored in in cases like this. Yeah, but also like if if women were to play in uh, men's pro sports, if they were good enough to play, why couldn't a man who's not going to be in the NHL play in a women's league? See, all of a sudden, you know I mean? all of a sudden, when you flip the scenario, you I can see scenario. way more complaints. Yeah, because you a couldn't man do in a that. Women's league. You, you couldn't do it. Like. It wouldn't be fair, you know what I mean? Yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, it would be like, no bueno, what the heck? <clears throat> and maybe one day there will be that the one woman who plays in one of these professional sports leagues is good enough to play. Maybe. Maybe they're already out there and good enough to play, but we just don't know because they're just never given the opportunity. Yeah, maybe. Right, like this this soccer player, uh, woman, she could have been good enough to make the team, and I don't know, maybe it was discrimination. Yep. Maybe not, right? <laughs> maybe she she wasn't good enough and just kind of feels like she was discriminated against. Of course, that's what you know her side of the story is going to be, but um, I think in more individual-focused sports like tennis, you, you probably could. You could probably have a mixed bracket, although I didn't know that the serve speeds were so different. Another sport I think of is like golf. Yeah. Right? There, there's big differences in the distance, right, uh, that – you know, male golfers and women golfers on the PGA and LPGA tour, they're, they're driving distance, right? Yeah. When they're hitting the ball off the tee. But that doesn't mean that the LPGA tour golfers are any less skilled. That's uh, yeah. That's interesting. Cause I think that's one sport where women could compete against men. I think so. Fairly. Yeah. Their distance isn't, isn't there as much, but they're like, as long as their technical game is on par or better than man's, then they, they'll have no problem in winning. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of times when you watch the LPGA tour, the women are actually like they have nicer swings. Yeah, right, they're... because it's not just a power game; it's all you know. They're focusing on technique, much more technical. than, yeah. than the the men usually are. I don't know. It's it's an interesting interesting question. I'd be curious to see what our or hear what our listeners have to say. Yeah, um, so we do have wanna... some female listeners out there, so it'd be interesting to get their take on it. See yeah. how they feel about it. So if you want to reach us. You can just send us an email at scruffcast at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter at scruffcast. You know, t- tell us your thoughts on these topics. We're not just shouting out into the void here. We want to want to get some feedback. That's right. You know, what, do you, what do you think? We already know what we think. What do you think? Okay. Now, John, this kind of follows the same um, trend as the women playing in men's sports. It's a little different, though. So there was a transgendered weightlifter that competed in the Commonwealth Games for New Zealand. So it was a man that transitioned into a woman, and she competed in uh, weightlifting. Uh, I don't know, like the one where they put the weight over their shoulder, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they all like snap their knees in half. That, yeah, that one. Um, so it was a transgender, yeah, a man that turned into a woman. <clears throat> what is, do, you, do you call that a transgender man or a transgender woman? A transgendered woman. Okay. Well, anyway, so this transgender woman competed in the women's category, and so. No one really filed a big complaint about it, but, you know, there's kind of coaches from other teams coming out and saying, like, you know, like, we're, we're not really saying anything, but it seems, you know, a, a little a little unfair. A little, a little shady. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I got I got a big problem with this. Because, like, you know. This is a whole different issue to me rather than ba- based on, like. This doesn't have anything to do with sports yeah, anymore. Yeah, right? This isn't, yeah. like, a skill-based thing, yeah. right? Because in a sport like weightlifting, it's like heavily like testosterone and muscular based, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, the the article about this I, I read earlier, and it actually said that this this woman, uh, her name is Laurel Hubbard. Uh, she actually competed in weightlifting under the men's category prior to transitioning yeah. into a woman. And now this seems. Yeah, I, I kind of have a problem with this too. Not, of course, not a problem with the fact that this person wants to be transgendered, right? And you know, live their life however they want. But it does seem unfair to the uh, other competitors. Unfair in to the, the field. rest of the women in that. Of field. course, right now, because there are big differences. If you look at like the Olympic records, right, and world records for like weightlifting between men and women, without even having to look it up, I already know there's going to be huge differences, right? Because yeah. when it, from a biological perspective. 
you know, a man can only become so strong. A woman can only become so strong, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of it's based on the, you know, the testosterone levels and stuff. And men just naturally have higher levels of testosterone. That's yeah. just, that's just a biological fact. That's just the way it is. Yes. Right. So then you have this person competing in the women's, uh, you know, weightlifting category, right? And they were just expected to just like smash all these records, right? So I could definitely see how if I was another woman competing, I would I would feel slighted. Oh, you better believe it. You know what? If I knew you could do this all along, I would have threw a wig on. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and join one of these things. You know, probably not because like all the women probably still would beat me in anything I would try to do in the Olympics anyway. But you know what I mean? You You're still showing up. You train for everything. You throw a wig on. You shave your beard and just be like, I'm transitioning into a woman now. And I'm going to compete in the women's category. And like the world is so like PC now. Gay right now. Correct. That, that, was a, that was a bad word to use there. But you you know what I mean. You said it, not me. Uh, the world is so uh, sensitive right now. Very, yeah. That uh, they would just like be like, well, okay, whatever you say. Because nobody wants to be like, no, dude, you can't do that. Yeah, who are they to tell you how to feel, you know? Yeah, you take some estrogen pills. You grow some chunkier man breasts than you already have. You know what I mean? No then, way, man. Then you're set. I'm ready to compete. <laughs> there you go. Like, I, I just, I don't know. I think I think it's super unfair to those women. <laughs> I, I agree. And here at the Scruff Cast, you know, we're all about the women. We're all about equality. Yes. Uh, some of our longtime listeners might remember episode eight. We solved gender equality already. So if you somehow haven't listened to that one, but you're Episode eight here, feels like it was just yesterday. I know. It. If you're somehow with us on episode 19, but you haven't listened to that one, go back and take a look. That, that was a good one. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I find this super unfair. And also, I don't know why more people aren't trying to pull this same crap. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Once well, again, I'm I, like, I'm not, I, I don't really, I'm not too educated on the whole transgender thing. Um, or tra on transgenders, I should say. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it just seems a little unfair. Yeah, I mean... That that's basically it. It's just I think it's unfair to the other competitors. Like right, you can live your life however however you want. Of course, everybody's entitled to do whatever yeah. makes them happy. But you know, it's just not fair to the other people competing. Now, like when when you try, like what is transitioning into a, a woman? You know, you take like estrogen pills, like you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, yeah, I and mean, does that like does that like chemically affect the rest of your body where like you get weaker? Well, it, it would raise your estrogen levels and lower your testosterone levels. The same way if it was a woman transitioning into a man, yeah. right? You'd have to, uh, you know, take like testosterone supplements, right? And raise your testosterone levels. Yeah. Now, another aspect of this that I think kind of messes with the rules is would any of these sort of hormone treatments fall under the, you know, like banned substances? Right? That's another <sighs> tricky issue because I know if it was the men's competition and somebody took testosterone boosting drugs that would probably See be you, you're gone yeah. oh yeah yeah for yeah. sure so if a woman was transitioning into a man and competing in a man's sport would she be suspended for using like testosterone uh, enhancing pills you know what i mean uh, i would have to say yeah i would think so i would think they should be right <clears throat> yeah um it's a no bueno for me yeah you're, in this case i'd say it's a no bueno for me if you're too. born a man you compete with the men if you want to be Labeled as a woman, go right ahead. You can yeah, do that. It, it's, it's not an issue with that at all. Yeah, it's no. just you know, in in fairness of like the competition, right? Yeah, the field of all the competitors. Now, a similar, a, a tangentially related scenario. Oh, we'll what? Say. Yeah, we're pulling out the big words on the Scruffcast. What? Did, what did you say? <laughs> tangentially related. I don't even know what that means. I'm pretty sure it's a word. <laughs> Were you like playing off transgender? <laughs> no, that's what it no, sounded no, like. No. Transgentially? <laughs> what? I can't even say that. Tangentially. Tangentially. Yes. Can we that... get a Can we get an Oxford dictionary definition for that? Uh, we can, but I don't want to close my uh, article <laughs> I have open here. Okay. I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll pull out my phone here and. Uh... So there was a, a scenario uh, a couple of years ago. Okay, hold on. Say that word again tangentially tan yeah t-a-n-g-e-n -N -N. oh you don't know how to spell it t-i-a-l-l-y the listeners at home i think that was along. it yeah i do know how to spell it Tan doesn't give me any credit over here now if you're uh dictionarying along at home oh 
in a way that relates only slightly to a matter. Yes. Damn, John. That was a $5 word? That was good. I should not have second-guessed you. I apologize. That's all right. That's all right. On the Scruffcast, it's all about forgiveness. So, so. this tangentially related story <laughs> I have is about um, people competing in sports games where they w- w- probably shouldn't have been allowed to. Well, in this case, definitely not allowed. Is an article I have here about in the Paralympics. Mm-hmm. There were basketball athletes for Spain who pretended to be <laughs> mentally challenged to compete in the Special Olympics. <laughs> Wasn't there a movie about that um, with Johnny Knoxville? I don't. I don't think it was based on this. No, not exact based on that. Thing, but there was a movie like, like yeah, the same uh, idea, right? Yeah, it was like, called The Ringer. I the think. Ringer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, so they pretended to be, you know, oh, mentally boy. challenged to compete in the Paralympics, and they they won gold. And then uh, a while after the the uh, the coach of the team was was found guilty and they got stripped in the medals and stuff. But oh well, yeah. Um, so it was in the 2000 Paralympics in, in Sydney. <laughs> so they won the gold medal. They ended up getting fined uh, like 150 thousand uh, euros. Um, and, and, and th- this is like way worse. Like this is just like s- scummy. Oh this yeah, is so this low. Is bad. Right? Like how could you go out there on the court? And and compete against these people, given that they're all trying their best, and you're trying to like you know lower y- your level down to you know compete in the game, right? But still win. But you're still stomping on everyone, technically, you know. Yeah, because you're not actually mentally challenged. Yeah. So of the 200 Spanish athletes at the Paralympics in uh, in Sydney mm-hmm. in 2000, at least 15 had no type of physical or mental handicap. They didn't even <laughs> pass medical or physiolog or sorry medical or psychological examinations. Oh man! Like the Spanish, you know, Olympic Committee was just kind of like whoop, whoop, just scooting them in. That's like worse than steroids or anything else. Uh, That's yeah. pretty low. It is pretty low. Like, imagine being those guys. You're like, hey, you know what? Yeah, uh, I'll take the job. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll play it up. I'll, I'll act I'll... a little silly while I'm out there. Like, you you couldn't make your actual national roster right for the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So you're like, eh, yeah, you know what? Sure, why not? And then now imagine you were one of the people who actually missed out on the team when you should have rightfully been on the team. Yeah. He's got these guys out there. Oh, man. It's crazy. So it was like 13 years after the fact they got caught with fraud and then the medal. 13 years? Yeah. So this is so this is an older story, 2013. But when we were talking about the story of the transgendered uh, weightlifting, it made me think about it. Ugh, yeah, that's just much worse. That's pretty low. So... Wow, wow, I didn't know this. So apparently, the way they determine it um, is the they needed two players with IQs below 70. No, I, sorry. I think everybody on the team, their IQ needed to be below 70. Right? So two players were actually legit in terms of being allowed to be on this team. Mm-hmm. Their IQs were in the proper range. But then the 10 other people posed as mentally disabled players with the help of fake medical certificates. Oh, man. Jeez, Louise. This is this is scummy. That is bad. All right, we move. <laughs> uh, I, got oh, a great, no. okay. I got a great quote from the coach here, though. Apparently, <laughs> uh, at one point during the first game of the tournament, they were leading uh, against China by 30 points, and then the... Uh, one of the players said the coach told them, and this is in quotes from the coach, lads, move down a gear or they'll figure out you're not disabled. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, th- w- this story's blowing my mind. He's like giving them the half the halftime pep talk. <laughs> yeah, no, in most sports, it's Guys, like... Guys, you're playing too hard. They're going to realize, they're gonna realize you're not mentally retarded. It, yeah, in most... In most- sports you know that halftime pep talk they you got to find that extra gear and he's saying he literally said move down a gear jeez <laughs> I, I cannot believe this. i know it's kind of like boys come on we gotta ramp it up a little bit it's like, yeah guys come on we gotta slow it down that's just we gotta, crazy we gotta let them get within 10 here <clears throat> that is that is funny some shady deals um <clears throat> but moving on <laughs> to some more transgendered stuff i think um so Ontario has issued the first non-binary X birth certificate. So um, this is someone uh, who identifies uh, as not a he or a she, but a they or a them. Um, uh, John, does this 
is this person transgendered or is this you you do not have what to be this? transgender to define yourself as non-binary this person they they don't identify with male they don't identify with female they're somewhere in the middle they're just like mm. and a transgender is changing from male to female or female to male yes they're choosing a gender they're just switching to a different gender yes but and the x's are a non-binary person they're genderless yeah i suppose are they just they don't identify this is their own gender i i have no idea as you can tell we're well in over our heads here we are but this smells a little fishy the whole x it is a little it's it's out there the whole birth certificate actually being changed like i have no problem with you know if you define uh sorry if you define yourself as a as a male or a female or neither or both whatever you know makes you happy right and you want to live your life how, however you you choose mm-hmm. that's totally fine it doesn't bother me at all why should it it's not my life yeah. right when it comes to stuff like this so this is like government identification not quite because you know it's not like your passport although i did read before that the government was thinking about stuff like this for passports yeah. but like imagine you emigrated to another country or sorry immigrated to another country and then you know, you had to apply for a visa and stuff there right after the fact. You were getting your, you know, per- permanent residency and stuff. And then look at your birth certificate and they're like, what the hell is this? X. An X? Like, uh, imagine going on, like, imagine they expanded this out to, like, passports, right? And now imagine you go to a place like Cuba yeah. or Dominican Republic and they look at your passport. They're going to be like, what is an what? X, man? <laughs> <laughs> Was, was Jamaica, that Jamaica again? Yeah, boy, what did the X on you? I'm working boy? on that Jamaican accent. I got it now. Yeah, we got rave reviews for our British accents last week. <laughs> the, the listeners, they love our accents. But imagine going to one of those sort of Caribbean countries, right? Where, you know, it's it's a totally different world from, you know, further up here in Canada and the United States. And then they see the X on the passport. They're going to be like, eh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. I think it's just going to cause these people more problems. Yeah. It's not going to affect me. It's not going to affect you. It's no, just going to cause them problems. Nothing changed for us. What I don't understand is... So what's this person's name here? Joshua M. Ferguson. Okay. So Joshua M. Ferguson says, Ontario's new policy will save lives in the transgender community. How, how will it save lives? I, I have no idea, was, Dan. I don't know what to tell you. I wish they would... I wish you would elaborate on that. Yeah, it's like just like such a a powerful just blanket statement. The only thing will is, save like, lives. The only I thing is, is like, like okay. that, that Bruce MacArthur who's out there killing all the gays in Toronto. If he's like, oh X, I don't really get that. I'll just leave them alone. <laughs> That's the only way this <laughs> saves lives. He's like, oh, uh, I, I I don't know if this is a, a go or no go. You'll pass. <laughs> I'm gonna move on to the next one. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Uh, a birth certificate is the most vital form of ID for personhood. Being officially counted and recognized is empowering. Um, I don't think a birth certificate is the most vital form of ID. Well, this person apparently is also lobbying. And that's not to just pick on this person in particular. This mm-hmm. is just the person in the news story. Right? The first the first one to really get, get this like push through for them. Yeah. This person was also lobbying for... Uh, I, I guess they used to, or they're originally from British Columbia or something like this, but British Columbia, they were lobbying for them to accept um, an X on their health card and driver's license in British Columbia. Now, the birth certificate's one thing, but your health card or driver's license, there's a whole other story. I think specifically with the health card, imagine you, you know, something happens, you go to the hospital. And then your for your your gender on there or this or sex it just says X. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't just have X on there. If you're a doctor, right, and it's like, well, what what does the patient chart say? Male, female. It just says X. There are certain things that like only affect males or only affect females. Guess what? Women don't have prostates. You yeah. know, if this X this X may have a prostate, and he'd never get it examined. Examined. Well, I guess the doctor could just take a peek under the gown, be like. <laughs> Is it an X? Like XX or XY? Oh, it's an XY. Okay. Got the we're dangling dang- bits? Oh, <laughs> I, was you sure say, do? I was about to say we're dangling I'm check over your here. Now. Yeah. Yeah, like. But, like, what if they had transitioned? Then they'd be a transgender. They wouldn't be an X. Well, no. Well, they I could, think. Well, 
Oh, this is a confusing topic. Transgendered exes. Ooh. It must exist. They must exist. Oh, he oh or she or them or they must exist. <laughs> this, this is a lot this of good, become too much for us. A lot of good sound bites in this episode. I don't. I don't. <laughs> don't understand this one bit. Maybe we. Uh, maybe we have some t- transgendered or ex listeners that can uh, give us a little feedback here. Yeah, this. like. You know, we wouldn't be adverse to doing, like, you know, the third guest, but as, like, you know, an interview type thing. Joshua Ferguson, if you're out there, you know. Come on by the Scruffcast. Come on by the Scruffcast. We, send, us, send us an email. Scruffcast at gmail. We want to learn. Us. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we're just two guys out here just looking for answers to life's mysteries, you know? That's it. Oh, well, what more can you ask for? We're bumbling through, but we're trying our best. And boy, this one's a mystery, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, think of how many more people out there have now heard of this whole concept of non-binary, right? And an X. Yeah. Many more, thanks to the powerful reach of the Scruffcast. I remember there, um, <clears throat> I work with a guy who's in school. He goes to college, he goes to Kingston. And uh, he has a teacher who, because uh, he's, I think he's going to become a teacher. I think he's just like getting an, or a history degree or something like that. So he actually has to take a class on like, um, I guess like it's, like, kind of like political correctness. He has to take a whole class on this. Oh, geez. Yeah, about how to deal with kids nowadays and all that kind of stuff. And his teacher identifies as a they. And I got kind of confused because I was like, isn't that kind of like a plural? You know? They. It's only one person. But then well, he he kind of described it as like if I'm talking about you to somebody else. Yeah. I guess oh, I- oh, they they said this. I'm not talking about two different people. I'm just talking about one, so. I'm just kind of telling you a story about how I got shut down in my own thinking. That's all. Well, you're not just telling me. You're telling the listeners, Dean. (laughs) This is an experience about sharing. Yeah, uh, I can see how that can be confusing. Because imagine you're in class, right? You want to say, like, miss or ma'am. It's just habit. And, like, yeah, yeah. get super offended, too. Like, no, 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 no. I'm a they. I'm a them. See, now that I kind of have a bit of an issue with. Because at first glance... Right, you would have no way of knowing a person's preferred pronoun if you yeah. know, right? Yeah. You if you see somebody and they're male, or at least what you're assuming, you know, they would identify as male. Then you'd say, Mister or he or whatever, right? And it, or if it was a woman, you'd say, you know, uh, Mrs. or Miss or yeah. She, I, right? I don't think they have a right to get upset with you if if you. <laughs> well, you have a right to mistaken. get upset, but I think it's like a little preposterous. Yeah. Right, like if I, if I wanted to identify as a woman, right, you know, and I look like a very manly man for our listeners, mm. like you know, extremely manly, but absolutely. And you came up to me and you're like, "Oh, hey, sir," and I'm like, "Excuse me, I identify as a woman," like, uh, uh, and I just get mad. Like that would be absurd. Yeah. Right. Like you would have no way of knowing this. Have you heard of that guy, uh, Jordan P- Peterson Patterson? Uh, yeah, Jordan B. Peterson. Yeah, Peterson. I, I've heard of him. He, I believe he was a professor at U of T. Uh, U of T. Yeah, here yeah, in Toronto. He had a very interesting take on it, too, because he said, I, I will not call somebody by um, a, a, preferred a pronoun. different pronoun. Yeah, their preferred pronoun. Um, but he, he gave kind of a uh, decent explanation for it. I think he kind of just said, like, if I see that you're doing it for the right reasons, I will. But if you're doing it kind of just to, you know, kind of, like, not be braggy about it, but just to do it for the sake of doing it. I will not call you that. Well, my, my take on it is you have the right to identify as whatever you'd like and to, you know, hope that people use, you know, whatever pronoun you like, right? That's totally within your right. It doesn't bother me at all, as, as it shouldn't, right? I'm living my life. You're living your life. And, you know, this guy, Jordan B. Peterson, he has, you know, every right to use a pronoun or not, right? Now, maybe he's just being a little bit of a dick about it and, you know, clearly... You, you know, you've transitioned and you want to be, you know, referred to as a he, right? Or as a she. And then he just refuses to. Yeah, it's a little, you know, it's a little douchey, right? But that that's totally his right, too. People have the right to be douchebags. But you know what, though? Like, the the people transitioning is, is one thing, right? Yeah. Like, you look at, like, Caitlyn Jenner. I mean, she she did a pretty quick transition because she got the money. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So it was like, boom. She went from male to female instantly. There's the people like kind of caught in between. It takes a little bit more time, right? But those people, you can still get a sense of like, oh, okay, I think they're, I think that's a she now. I will, you know, I'll call it a she. You know what I mean? Like, and you can kind of point that out. Yeah. But like with the they's and the them's, you don't know. I think it's because it's it, no it, idea. Like it's such a foreign concept, right? Like, you know, all your life, like 
you know, the transgender community seems like this enormous community because, you know, especially the way society is now, you know, very progressive. Not that I have any problems with this, but, very, you know, very progressive and, you know, everything's becoming like very politically correct and stuff like this. Right. And we're seeing like huge strides towards, you know, more inclusiveness of the community and stuff with things like, you know, putting the X on the driver's license and health card and stuff. You know, but if someone transitions, right? Or sorry, sorry, I, I didn't even go into my my original point, which is seems like this huge community. But when you really drill down, it's probably you know maybe one percent of, you know, the global population. Oh, yeah, if that. Right? So nine, that means ninety nine percent of the people you run into in your everyday life are either male or female, right? So even if you see someone transition from male to female or female to male, it still kind of makes sense. You're like, oh, okay. You know, they've transitioned from female to male. That's a male. That's he, right? But this third case where you're like a they or them, it's like a totally foreign concept. So you, that's why it seems so more outlandish, right? You're like, oh, yeah. like I've never, you know, many cases people are like, I've never even heard of this probably until listening to this podcast. All right. I'm going to have one last take on this thing, and then we're going to wrap this up. No, we're not talking about this anymore. Yeah, we went into this topic quite a bit. I am down with the transgenders. Um, if they want to do their thing, do their thing. I'm all about it. Not down with the X's. I think it's a whole load of bullshit. I'm going to say it, and I'm, we might get some flack for this. We might get our own Twitter moment. Maybe. But I, maybe. Think it's, I think it's a little ridiculous, and that's that. I'm not even going to let you respond to that. All righty. <laughs> that's all I got to say. All right. I'm not going to drag you down with me here. <laughs> all right. All right. For those of you still listening, we got some we got some funny stuff coming up. So yeah, like, we know you come here for we, you know the hot takes and the funny stuff. We got some uh, lame topics out of the way, and we're moving right <laughs> along. John, you want to take us away here? Sure. So I'll just uh, kick it off with the headline: Woman allegedly <laughs> blows up pee sample in a Seven Eleven microwave. The little subtitle here is that the on duty clerk was pissed. Pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I didn't even catch that. Yeah, so this woman, anyway, she uh, went into a 7-Eleven with a bottle of urine and <laughs> heated it up in their microwave where you heat up, like, taquitos and stuff like that. And it exploded and pee went everywhere and she just tried to walk out. <clears throat> so the clerk was obviously pissed, told her to clean it up. She wiped up the floor a little bit and then left again. Yeah, I'd be mad, too. <laughs> yeah. She had pee explosion everywhere. And, like... The funniest thing about this is that um, she apparently was taking the pee uh, to get a urine test done for an employer. And so, like, you think about it, though, right? She's like, it's obviously not her urine because she's probably doing a ton of drugs. So she gets this out of the urine. She warms it up so that it's it's almost like it came out of her body warm. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. very. And then she's going to bring it there. So sketchy. it's a little more legit. Yeah, maybe she only need to put in, like, a little, uh, you know, 15 seconds, and instead she hit, like, 15 minutes. People like this, you should just, like, you should be able to hit, you know? Just like, <laughs> like pop, 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 just, like, if you're the clerk, you should be able to go over there and just... <laughs> <laughs> just lay the beat down, you know? <laughs> just say, excuse me, can you look in the uh, microwave here a little a little bit? Look at this mess. And when she goes in, pow! <laughs> yeah. Smack the door on it? Yeah. Ridiculous! Like, what? Why don't you just heat it up at home? Maybe she doesn't have a home. You ever think about that, Dan? No. Oh, well. <laughs> That's why she needs this job. Get, get your little crack pipe lighter out and heat it up that way. Well, the other thing too is, Crazy how long ago did bitch. she get this? Did she, how long ago did she get this pee? Right? She yeah. got to go heat it up. She doesn't have a friend. It's like fresh. I don't know. Maybe it was off the black market. Who gave this woman pee? Yeah, that's a whole other issue. Like her friends, like <laughs> what's her name? An- Angelique <laughs> God That L- sounds like the type of woman who do this Listen up Angelique I got you I'm a P for you Just make sure you heat it up before you go Yeah cause, cause Angelique's friend She's gone through this process before She knows Angelique she knows Sanchez sent- <sighs> yeah, It's just ridiculous So yeah. the, the on duty clerk actually threatened to call the police Cause the woman was gonna leave They called the police And then there's a quote right in here, right? The, where the person working there, the quote is, when I reminded her that urine blew up where people prepare their food, she told me it was not real urine. <laughs> that's, that's what the police officer taking a quote from her said. What, what were you heating up? Yeah, fake urine? She's yeah. going for a urine. To, I, I have no idea. And she took a couple, couple napkins, tossed them on the floor, and she's like, bam, bam, boom, call it a day. 
So she was cited $500 uh, for damaging the microwave and was not allowed to take her drug test that day. So assuming she did not get that job. <laughs> yeah. Going to go ahead and assume. A safe assumption. Just, just a ridiculous story. Yeah. Now, I have another bit of a ridiculous one here to, to go into next. Okay. Um, so, you know, in that last story, this person, you know, is still finding their way in life, right? You know, everything's not going quite right. In this next story, this guy, he's got it all figured out. You know, when you're growing up, people are like, I want to be an astronaut. You know, I want to play in the NHL. I want to be a rock star. Well, this man, Don Gorsk, a 64-year-old retired prison guard from Wisconsin, has just eaten his 30,000th Big Mac. Jesus Christ. Don't let your dreams just be dreams, Dan. How is he still alive? 30,000. Just crazy. At, at So he actually has a Guinness World Record for most Big Macs. Like, that's crazy. Imagine how much money McDonald's made off this guy. Now, to give you a sense of just how big that number is, if you ate one Big Mac a day, right? Every day you have a Big Mac for lunch or a Big Mac for dinner. It would take over 82 years to eat 30,000 Big Macs, never missing a day. So, so this guy's so like doubling up. Years. This guy's like doubling up, tripling up. Right? If he started when he's 23, he's eating two Big Macs a day for 41 years in a row. Oh, my God. You know what? I can imagine there's not much to do in Wisconsin. So That's true. Eating two Big Macs a day might be the only thing to do. Probably keep you out of drugs. Like, uh, at this point, like, McDonald's probably giving this guy free Big Macs. You think so? I he, don't know. It he claims to be healthy, too. I weigh 190 pounds and my cholesterol is 165. I'm better than normal. <laughs> I'm, I'm I better than normal? I don't That's think That's McDonald's so. new slogan. I'm better than I'm normal. I'm better than normal. I'm better than normal. Yeah, that's... That's crazy. So he's been eating Big Macs every day since 1972, and he broke the world record in 2016 when he ate his 28,788th Big Mac. So what I got to say is, what happened to the guy who got misplaced, the guy who had only 28,787? He's probably dead. (laughs) Probably. Probably died eating that last burger. That that was his legacy he's leaving behind. And it's just gone now. Doesn't matter. This guy chomped it out into the dust. (laughs) This guy just took it right over. A, a, a nice quote from him from the article here. I love the patties. I love the sauce. I can't get enough of it. I get it. I love McDonald's too. Who doesn't love? McDonald's? Oh man, I love McDonald's. But like, dude, come on, that's not good for you. You know, you gotta have like, gotta have. You gotta be making a decent amount of money to eat two Big Macs a day too. Yeah, especially in Wisconsin. That's like he's. I would assume he's not just getting the Big Mac. He's probably getting a combo. Of course, maybe he upsizes the fries. That's pro- that's what they do in the states. Oh yeah, you want to upsize the fries? Want to upsize for one dollar? Yeah, okay. That's how they talk in Wisconsin. I've been there plenty of times. <laughs> I'm sure we. Ha- that's our Wisconsin accent. Add it to the long list of accents used on the Scruffcast. So what I'm curious is, are there any Wisconsin listeners out there? Is this guy like a a, a local hero? Probably. Like, like when he sat down. Well, uh, another thing I'm thinking. Imagine you're this guy. What was his name? Don. I don't know. Uh, imagine you're sitting down for your 30,000th Big Mac. W- did he have any sort of like little celebration? Or is he like, you know, he's humble. You know, he accomplishes all his achievements, and he doesn't let, you know, his fame get the better of him. Like, was he counting? I would assume he's counting this whole time. Oh, he had to have been counting. He had to have been. Otherwise, he, he, there's no way. But 30,000 is a lot of Big Macs. It's insane. Don't know how like, he's Like, did he sit alive. down? He, he opens the box, and, like, does he say a little prayer? And he's like... 30,000, this one's for you, Jesus. <laughs> and he chomps in. <laughs> like, that's just... Dude, it's just blowing my mind. Like, 30,000... Like, doing anything 30,000 times. You know what this all reminded me of? Is that um, the video that kind of went viral on YouTube with that, like, southern woman talking like talking about how the the woman disrespected her in the McDonald's. She's like, and I throw punch that bitch. <laughs> have you ever seen this video? <laughs> no, oh, I have not. We, I got a YouTube after this. So you got to see it. Oh, we've definitely got to I know there's this. people who've seen this video. It is the funniest thing. It's this like crazy Southern woman who, um, first off, she's upset because the drive through line was too long. She's like, so I had to get out of my car and walk inside. And then the, uh, the woman was like, the woman I think asked her like, 
And uh, she says something like, oh, and you want to upsize, don't you? Because, like, she made some fat joke to this customer. She's like, eh. And I, and I nearly throw punched the bitch. Oh, man. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, man. We definitely got to tweet this one. We'll tweet that one out. Yeah, we're tweeting out fun stuff all the time. Yeah. If you're out there not, you know, not following us, but you're listening to the podcast, you're missing out on all these gems. That's right. Yeah. That's definitely what we got to watch. Yeah. Just. <sighs> so we got another. Uh, yeah. I'll let you take this pretty one. Pretty crazy uh, thing that happened again in the States. On a United flight, which seems to have all the crazy stuff happening. <clears throat> so, this is the title of the article, and also a quote straight from a flight attendant. <clears throat> if your seatbelt isn't tight, you fucked up. Possibly drunk flight attendant goes ham on United flight. <laughs> so, apparently there was a drunk and or high flight attendant on a United flight. Um, and she said that uh, during the... Um, the safety, the pre-takeoff safety video you watch. If your seatbelt isn't tight, you fucked up. Yeah, can you imagine sitting down for your flight, waiting for the boring, you know, old safety instructions? You know, uh, in the case of an emergency, the aisle way will be illuminated. The emergency exits are on the back and at the at the front. And yeah. instead, instead she does this. And there's like a great picture of this woman in the article, like just flopping over, like She's on like top of a passenger. Dead in her seat. <laughs> yeah, and sitting on her seat. I can only imagine. So, apparently this woman was so obnoxious that United actually refunded all of the passengers on the flight for this. Yeah. So, as you can imagine, this woman definitely got fired. I can only imagine how mad United was to have to refund all those people for the flights. Because you know how stingy they are. This is the airline that, like, beat that Asian doctor off the plane last year. Remember this? Oh yeah, yeah. Right. So like they do not like airlines do not like spending any money they don't need to, right? And cutting their costs. So to refund everybody, they must have been furious. Yeah. So the uh, the woman tweeted a picture because that's the way to you know uh, get everybody in trouble these days is just by tweeting things. Yeah. So she says thanks United for a terrifying flight, and she accompanies this with two photos of this uh, drunk or stone flight attendant. So she says thanks United for a terrifying flight. Drunk or stone stewardess endangered everybody's lives. I had to go to the cockpit and call the pilot and tell him that they had an out-of-control attendant. The cops and, amb- and an ambulance were waiting for her. Now, uh, I don't think she was endangering everybody's lives. This woman also kind of sounds like the same kind of woman that would come into the store and ask for your manager if there was no sales that I, week. I guarantee you this woman tell- told everybody this story after the fact, and she's kind of putting herself just one tier below Sully, who landed the plane in the Hudson River. She's like, yeah, I helped save all those people. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Oh, I was the woman who busted that flight attendant. <laughs> I went and told the. I went into the I cockpit. Walked, I walked right up to the cockpit and I said, Wait. "Let me in, pilot. You got a <laughs> drunk lady out here." I don't know. <laughs> and I guarantee you, probably going into the cockpit of a commercial flight's probably a felony of its own. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, imagine. Like, in, on a regular flight where the flight attendants aren't high or this possibly drunk. This woman is so full of shit. Like, I had to go to the cockpit and call the pilot to tell him, what, was this woman the only flight attendant on that plane? Yeah. No. Just tell another flight attendant. Be like, hey, this woman's drunk. Go get the pilot. Yeah, we, we got we got a code, code green, code green, or whatever code they use for drunk and or high flight attendants. Yeah. What's funny is, like, in one of these pictures, she's, like, leaning on this other guy who is a... Uh, um, a uh, passenger on the plane. And the thing is, that guy also looks like he's just cracked out of his mind, too. <laughs> he does, <laughs> you know too. Yeah, this is like... Uh, I Probably saw the story him. all over Twitter. We'll definitely have to tweet this one. I've been trying to, more recently, tweet out the articles we've talked about on the show. Like, throughout the week, following the episode. So we, we do a poor job of explaining everything, which I'm sure you guys all know, so... Yeah, you know, we, we like to take things that, uh, you know, you can't see, like these funny pictures and stuff, and then just describe them for you, and then you just gotta be like, what are they talking yeah, about? Right. That's the magic of the Scruffcast. Crazy cracked out woman. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, we have a, uh, a listener email this week, don't we? We do. Oh, exciting. All right, so we got an email from a listener this week, and they said, Hey, John and Dan, loved your last podcast, A Bit of Everything for Everyone. Your British accents are terrible, by the way, but entertaining. Oi! They were entertaining. (laughs) They were entertaining. I'll give them that much. As for your introduction, Hi, I'm John, and I'm Dan. 
It's not overly exciting, but works. I believe that's what they call it, like a backhanded compliment. Yeah. It's kind of like, you guys are getting the job done, but you know. Eh. Yeah, we're like the no name brand, like paper towels. Yeah, it's drying the counter, but like, eh, it's no bounty. No. Yeah. All right, well, email us your suggestions. <laughs> Anyways, they go on to say, have you guys seen the latest controversy about one guy's promposal? It read, and then this is in quotes here, from the guy's sign. This is not me. <laughs> so, and, and it said, if I was black, I would be picking cotton, but I'm white, so I'm picking you for prom. What are your thoughts? Promposal, bueno or no bueno, your dedicated listener. Well, I, I think we can uh, both agree it's a uh, absolute no bueno. <laughs> yeah, it's an for easy, that promposal. <laughs> it's an easy no bueno. <laughs> oh, oh so, boy. This was um, what state was this in Florida? Yeah, I, it was I'm in just Florida. Uh, okay, I was just I was just putting the guess out there. It was an easy assumption. <laughs> yeah. So, well, for our listeners out there who aren't familiar with the idea of a promposal, you know, it's basically asking your date to prom, right? You know, these eighteen like, year olds finishing up high school want to ask their date to prom. Well, kid, you go to prom yeah, and, and kids are kids are now doing these like really uh, lame things where it's like. It's like you're. It's like a proposal. Like you're getting engaged yeah. or something like that. So they do something like extravagant, but like an eighteen year old's version of extravagant, right? Yeah, like putting up a racist sign. Exactly. <laughs> so it was just a, a white kid who he got a Bristol board and he actually used stencils to draw out the letters to say, "If I was black, I'd be picking cotton, but I'm white, so I'm picking you for prom." And he put "U" as the letter "U" and four as the number four. So like, th- first off. This guy had to sit there, get the Bristol board, get the stencils out, and go over it, and he's like, oh, yeah, she's going to love this one. Yeah. Ugh, man, uh, what a dumbass. Boy. That's what? all I got to say. Like, I, The whole thing is ridiculous. Did she say yes? I, I, I bet she said yes, and then all this controversy blew up, and she's like, no way, Tyler, or whatever the guy's I'm name gonna was. I'm going to back out. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Noah. Noah Crowley, that's his name. I like how the, the uh, Washington he would Post, be a Noah. <laughs> the Washington oh, Post is putting douche. him on blast here. I know, but but they blur out his face. So it was so bad that he, well, after the fact, obviously he apologized. But it was so bad that his family actually apologized, being like, "Hey, our son's a dumbass," but like you know, it's not on us. He's stupid on his own. Yeah, I know. Don't you think his parents knew that he was like working on that though? Yeah, he was up in his room and he probably went down there eating mashed potatoes for dinner. And he's like, "Hey, check this out, Mom, like, Dad, look at this, Noah." I don't know if she's gonna like that one. You're you're so wild, Noah. We have fun. We have fun here in the Crowley household. <laughs> like ridiculous. Do you, do you think you can just chalk this up as just a stu like a dumb kid just trying to be funny? Or do you think it's more than that? I'd like to think it's just a dumb kid trying to be funny. Like, do because... you think this kid is truly racist? You know, or is he just trying to be funny? Like, it. He's clearly an idiot. Let's like, yeah, like so no, clearly an idiot. No questions about it. But can you just chalk it up as like it's just some stupid kid trying to be funny, and it was not. But well, speaking of stupid kids out there, I actually read other articles that were talking about this guy inspired imitators. Yeah, people in other states. I believe there was a couple people in Michigan did the same thing. <laughs> first off, it's bad enough the first time. Now you're copying it. You're not even getting the points for originality on you the proposal. You saw how much crap this kid got in. Why? Why would you do it yourself? Yeah, you're losing the. You're losing any creativity points because you just copied the idea, and you're gaining stupidity points for seeing how stupid this guy was, and then proceeding to do the same thing. Yeah, this kid was the original idiot, but if you're gonna do it again, you're like double the idiot. You saw how poorly it worked out for him, but you're still doing it. Yeah. If I, I was I, black, I'd be picking cotton, but I'm white, so I'm picking you for prom. Oh boy! <sighs> yeah, that just sums it up. You oh dumb, boy! Noah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if no. If you're out there and you're listening, send us an email. Tell us what was going through your head, not through your brain, because it doesn't sound like you have one. But <laughs> you know, maybe you do. Come defend yourself on the scruff cast. We put you on blast. <laughs> oh my god! That 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 moment of silence there just says it all. Uh, I don't know. And you know what? Yeah. This guy will. Go to college and then apply for jobs and stuff, and they'll be like, Noah Crowley, let me take a Google. That, that name <laughs> sounds familiar. They'll look it up and they'll be like, oh, no bueno. Yeah. <sighs> well, it was a journey on this one. We, we, we went through a lot of stuff on this podcast. That flew by. I feel like it's it hasn't even been however much time we've been doing this for. Well, <sighs> 
You know what a time it is, Dan. Time for the shameless five minutes of self-promotion. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> so, if you're out there listening to this gruff cast, we put out the call last week. We wanted to change up our intro. So we need your suggestions. Episode 20 next week. We're thinking of doing something special for next week, actually. Yeah, should we tell should... them or no? Uh, No. 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 It's going to be a surprise. We'll make you wait. So give us your intro suggestions, and you can send those to us on Twitter, at ScruffCast. You can email them to us at scruffcast at gmail.com. Yep. If you're listening on iTunes, you can leave us a review, give us a thumb up, five stars, say, wow, you guys are great, your accents are so funny, ha ha. If you're on YouTube listening right now, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, you know, tell us about how dumb Noah is. Um, that, that's pretty much it. I, I gotta apologize, sound, you know, if we sound a little sniffly this episode. You know, we're just, we're just putting in the work for the scruff. I think cast. I'm always sounding sniffly, so I'm sure they're used to it. Yeah. Um... Yep. And, and and that's the end of that. <laughs> any any uh any more words? Nate? Oh uh, uh, no, I think that's the end of this. Oh yeah, so next week we're gonna have a special uh, podcast. We're pretty sure we're gonna do it. We are gonna do it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. You might not, and that's okay too. <laughs> you might not have enjoyed this one. But yeah, especially if you're a they or a them or a who or a what or a Doctor Seuss character. Anyway. That's it. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Scruffcast. We'll catch you next time.